But even if, <laughs> without functorial, you still can. Huh? Even without the functorial. Without functorial, you can get no functorial. Yeah. Okay. Now maybe uh, it's time uh, to outline what we currently some history. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, history is as follows. Uh, there is something uh, what I call classical, uh, uh, well, uh, so maybe I'll put here, uh, this, so it started, uh, well, after Italians, uh, maybe first uh, really uh, great achievement was by Zariski in around 40, uh, uh, he resolved three falls in two uh, papers in annals, and then Hironaka, in 64, uh, the general uh, varieties in characteristic zero, and even some other schemes uh, he had to go to formal completions, he proved more. Not only varieties, but also varieties in all dimensions. And then, uh, for a long period, uh, so this was a completely different argument comparing to Zariski, and all the rest was sort of implied by Hironaka in classical situation. I mean, people. Uh, did not really understood his proof completely. I guess Grothendieck, when he awarded him Fields Medal, he mentioned that he does not understand all details of the proof. Uh, but, uh, oh yes, many people, including Hironak himself, just try to understand uh, the me real mechanism of what's going on and uh, produce a minimal uh, amount of ideas which are enough to prove your claim by induction. I mean, they cut, in a sense, they cut the original proof and they, they left much less inside. And this shaped to the classical uh, canonical method, which I'm going now to describe. It was in the 70s, uh, uh, 70s, uh, Hironaka uh, produced something called uh, idealistic exponent. Morally, it's uh, just ideal to the power of 1 over d. He did not formalize it in this way, and, uh, okay, we'll come to this sometimes later, but to some extent he wanted some form of weighted ideal or something like this. Uh, Giro came with the idea of maximal contact. Again, we'll see this thing. Uh, and uh, in uh, towards 90s, uh, Gerson Milman and uh, Will Mayor constructed canonical resolution and uh, uh, in 2003, let's say 2000, uh, Vodarchik constructed smooth functorial. I'll immediately say what does it mean. And uh, I know Polar wrote a book that is, it was possible to give a proof in one uh, graduate course to fresh men in master uh, level, so yeah, just, it was huge, but uh, the idea so was more or less the same, uh, we got few algorithms which look differently by description, but were more or less equivalent, only combinatorial power was different, and it always was a question if uh, we just have one God-given algorithm, or we just uh, learned everything from Hironaka, yeah, and uh, it was not that clear, and only now we started to discover uh, other things, but maybe I'll just say what does it mean, smooth functorial. Smooth uh, functorial means that for any smooth uh, we have y rest equal to x rest times y over x. So resolution pull back for any smooth morphism. Uh, you cannot hope for functionality with respect to everything, obviously, but, uh, you know, for smooth you don't want to do anything, but for non-smooth you, you want, so definitely you must restrict this. Seems to be the most general uh, setting for varieties, but honestly, uh, regular is even a bit more general and uh, more or less, more or less the same. Uh, so smooth, regular functionality, and uh, this automatically implies that your method is local, if you construct something local and you prove that it is functorial, it automatically globalizes. It globalizes not only, not only for schemes, but to stacks, because stacks can be presented by a smooth chart. So you automatically get on the nose 
much more. And if you are able to prove this uh, uh, from the beginning that it is smooth factorial, your life is easier. This was the measured observation of Zlodarczyk that your proof becomes simpler. You prove more and your proof is simpler and it's standard situation with inductive argument. Okay? Uh, good. Uh, now, uh, what uh, we discovered after that. Uh, so, first of all, uh, in uh, work with uh, two authors around 17, uh, we discovered uh, logarithmic methods which also work for morphism. It works for log schemes and for morphisms. Our motivation was first of all morphisms because this is really something new. Uh, but we discovered that, you know, morphisms, you cannot resolve morphisms by something smooth. At least semi-stable must be implemented. If you work over high dimensional base, there are standard examples that even semi-stable is not enough, you should consider better something like monomial or log smooth. Toroid or log smooth depends on your language. So it was clear that one should switch to logarithmic category. And moreover, it would be better to get log smooth from the reality. If you work in category where smooth notion of smoothness is more extended, we should go for this. Yeah, and uh, indeed, uh, this algorithm was... Now, even in classical situation, it gives much longer property. For example, in Hironaka situation, when you work with simple normal crossing exception divisor, we allow branched cover over this divisor, it is log et al cover. So our algorithm is compatible with the, the new one, but Hironaka is not. So this gives you stronger properties already in uh, standard situations. Now, uh, a complication which happened, uh, we'll come to it later, is that we were not able to keep category just uh, varieties. We had to go to stacks. It was discovery. In the beginning, it seemed completely technical issue, but uh, we could not manage without it, and uh, just it was clear that if you want smooth functionality, you must go to stacks. Once we have stacks, we suddenly had more operations, and then we discovered uh, another uh, algorithm, it was uh, weighted. So when you uh, say stacks, you mean uh, like delete Mumford stacks? Or? Uh, even the billion stabilizers are enough, but uh, yeah. Um, but at the very least, you, you should allow non-representable modifications, which increase stabilizers by a billion. Okay. Uh, now weighted uh, on orbifolds, this definitely works only with stacks. It was done around uh, 80 or 90, uh, again by us and independently by McQuillan. Uh, and then there is a push forward of these two. You can do uh, log smooth weighted, uh, log methods weighted. This was done around 20 by uh, Quack, uh, when student of Abramovich. Uh, and now we know that here there is a direction which leads to 40. This is work in progress with uh, Belotno. So I don't know, maybe 24, maybe 25. Okay, uh, good. So, and uh, I'll try to say a bit about, so I'll definitely start with classical. And then I'll try to discuss, uh, to discuss mutations which lead to here and to here. Uh, okay, we'll see how much of this. What was the spoliation? I mean, I understand it. Well, it may, it may, it may, it may. Okay, uh, let's postpone it to the end, but, but it really means that you have some uh, uh, smooth variety with uh, singular foliation. You want to resolve foliation. This goes again, you embed into smooth foliated thing with larger round foliation. You principle as ideal way and so on, but okay, maybe just in the end. Okay. okay, now uh, what can I say about all methods? Uh, maybe I'll cheat a bit. It's not working. Uh, completely not working. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, this will be 
called uh, principalization. Now, uh, my goal is to describe, uh, I'll start with classical thing, but I'll try to describe it as close to the other cases as possible. So it will be sort of twisted, so with generalization will be the most natural one. Uh, and uh, I start with general strategy, which works for in all these methods. Yeah, except the risky, which was something completely different. All these methods are sort of. Uh, so all methods are embedded. So, uh, so principalization or embedded resolution. So locally, and locally means if you work with stack, it time locally or smooth locally, you, you know, locally can be different locally, but uh, locally embed Z inside X, which is smooth. So you have some singular guy embedded into smooth and what we is blowing up and then find a blow up, find a sequence of modifications <coughs> so that these are uh, simple modifications in fact they are always blow up so something very close to being blow up uh, xi are smooth and zn is smooth okay for example here obviously we can embed it into a2 blow up a2 at the point at the origin okay and we get such a thing or we can embed this in a3 Again, go up a three, and we'll get such a thing. With exceptional divisor being premature of the point. Uh, so obviously, we want want with this to be full premature because it contains uh, junk. It contains exceptional divisors. In the better method, we want to remove some part of the thing. Okay. Typically, uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, to have z i plus one. Let's call this morphism f i from x i to x i plus one uh, to be equal to full pull back of z i minus uh, exceptional divisor. Or in classical situation, one takes some copies of exceptional divisor. It will be a matter of bookkeeping, as I will immediately explain. Uh, okay. Uh, so we want this f i from x i plus one the blow up of x i along the i. So we do such a thing. Let's denote it maybe e i plus one. Uh, so here, definitely in both cases, we want to, reduce, to remove twice the exceptional divisor. So classically, one says we blow up smooth center and remove twice. I prefer to say differently. We blow up. Uh, we can blow up uh, OV. Can be ideal of some uh, V naught to power D, where V naught is smooth. So. This is a cycle theoretic thing? This? Yeah. Scheme theoretic. Ah, so it's this one. It's this one. I.e. Uh, uh, ideal of zi plus 1 equals to ideal of zi yeah. times ox i plus 1. Yeah, so and then I take uh, ideal of e i plus 1, okay. which is pullback so of ideal of this. Minus 1. Minus 1. The, the EI plus one of the width doesn't have the right dimension. A priori, yes. This EI plus one. Uh, this, uh, this guy, yes. No, but the EI plus, plus one. No, e, EI plus one in this formula. The EI plus one doesn't have the right dimension. Ah, the, the, so, so. this may just, okay. Maybe it's better. Okay. I just meant that in classical situation, one uh, uh, says that 
we blow up smooth center and we remove disco D copies of its pullback. I suggest to view it different. So this was just 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 remarking. It's not a real twist. It's not twist by now. Okay. It's not uh, set minus because uh, because uh, if my V okay so so what I want to say is that blow up of X along I V equals to blow up of X along I V to V. Always if you blow up an ideal it's this power by inverse property of blow up it's an easy exercise to check that this is the same operation okay. But exceptional divisor is different because in this case it will be just uh, smooth uh, hypersurface and here it will be decopies of the same. So for this reason, just uh, I, I take here minus one, but I bookkeep it as blowing up this power. Okay? It's just, just, just so far it's completely equivalent, just, just equivalent view on classical system. Well, what I want to view this formula, you, you, you take the inverse image, there are some extra things that you do not want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's not the cycle theory. You're, in any sense, because of things that do not have the right dimension. Let, okay, let, let me let me let me mention the following. We we know that z i plus one is contained between full pullback, which definitely is of wrong dimension. Okay. It contains z i plus one. And it contains strict transform of z i. It can be equal, it can be not equal, we have no idea. It can be of wrong dimension, direct, uh, dimension or correct dimension. Again, we don't know. Okay? Yeah? Good. Uh, well, now, uh, just one example. Uh, so, uh, morally, this uh, sounds, uh, you know, very uh, natural way to do. Maybe to take maximum multiplicity of my singularity, blow up something there, and remove uh, decopy, and remove uh, what I'm allowed to remove of exception, and see if something improves. Uh, the problem is that uh, sometimes you are stuck. Example. Let's take with umbrella. Uh, when is the locus of x squared plus y squared z inside a free? Uh, so this is my z, this is my x. Uh, well, the picture looks uh, like something like this. Uh, okay. Uh, we have here. Uh, yeah. We have here self intersection. Okay, zx, yx. Uh, and uh, when we blow up this point, it's easy to see that uh, uh, yeah, we take uh, x prime equal to blow up at the origin of x, and uh, full pullback uh, will be given by vanishing on z chart. I'll consider only z chart. So on z chart, I divide x and y by z. So in my new coordinates, it will look like z squared times x prime squared plus y prime squared z. So I got twice exceptional divisor. I remove it. And I'm stuck with the same singularity. Okay, so uh, obviously this uh, origin is the worst possible singularity. If you just blow it up, you, 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 are, you are stuck. Now, uh, the algorithm uh, well, depends on its combinatoric. Uh, it always starts with blowing up this point, sometimes maybe twice or whatever. I once discussed, discussed with Gagar, and it was the only case when Gagar was you know, <laughs> making some mistakes, so he insisted to blow it up twice before I convinced him that it won't work. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, uh, but you can notice that if you blow up the whole singular line, then you improve the singular. So the algorithm typically goes as follows. It gets enough evidence that uh, brute force won't work, and then blows up the line. Okay? And the uh, conclusion is that no algorithm without memory. Okay? Uh, so it was sort of you know, 
axiom that we must design some algorithm which, uh, you know, which has abstraction. Remember something uh, which consists of steps. Or is, uh, how do you know that there wouldn't be an algorithm that you just look at this and know that you have to blow up the line and then start the uh, Okay. <laughs> In this case, you are formally right, but there is a bit better. Uh, I agree. But there is a bit better uh, example by Vodarchik where you take z square equal x y t. Okay, uh, the same degrees. So when you blow up the singularity, you against a stack with the same singularity. Now x square uh, or say z square equal to x y t, it has uh, triple uh, s three symmetry by permuting the variables. And the singular locus consists of three lines and a single point inside. So the only equivariant center is the origin. So if you also insist that you have equivariant algorithm, and it must blow up this point, and if it has no memory, then it will continue. Okay? So at the very least, you can show that there is no uh, smooth functorial algorithm. Okay? Well, okay. uh, well, now let's uh, discuss classical class two minutes. So first of all, uh, it's primary invariant is D, uh, which is the order of the ideal of Z, the Z which we want. Ah, yeah, I, I, I apologize. I uh, forgot to mention one important thing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really before we go further. Uh, so I said that uh, it's enough uh, to uh, uh, instead of resolution, one switches to embedded resolution. But honestly, one switches to pass a question of principalization, principalization, which says that find a sequence x n plus one x n zero and uh, i z zero uh, here and so on. So when the last i z and plus one is just trivial. But this principalization question is sort of strange question. It seeks to produce a sequence so that the last z and plus one is empty. Okay? And it turns out that if you are able to solve the principalization question, then the embedded resolution follows on the nodes. Just follows that Z n, the last step when we have uh, non-trivial ideal, Z n was smooth, and actually it was equal to the end. The only way to kill generic point of uh, our center is to blow up the center whose generic point is the generic point of Z n plus one. The center is smooth, so it has to coincide with Z n plus one. With Z n. Uh, now this. Always is considered as a you know trick coming from no nowhere miracle. You have two very different problems, and one follows from the other just by a trick. Now I want to argue, but actually it's at least it's not that strange that two questions are related uh, for the following reasons. Uh, resolution says that there uh, exists smooth modification. Of any, of any integral uh, branches. And principalization uh, says the following. Uh, please notice that if I am able uh, to find a sequence which uh, uh, um, trivializes ideal, then on the toolbook my ideal will be product of invertible ideals. Each time I factor out invertible part. So I found a sequence which makes the original ideal i0 
inverted. If I am able for any idea to find a sequence, simple sequence, which makes it invertible, it means that I have a family of simple modifications, starting with something smooth, which keeps it smooth, which are cofinal among all modifications, because blow-ups of ideals are cofinal among all modifications. So principalization actually is equivalent to the claim that simple modifications of a smooth X and their compositions are cofinal. Okay? So if you once arrive to something smooth, you have enough freedom to produce cofinal family of, of smooth numbers. Obviously, these two things are related. Yeah? Not always it's natural to expect that this is strong. So it's not that strange, but really there is a formal reduction of one to nothing. Okay? So from now on, we only discuss principalization. We only work with ideals. We don't care what is the geometry of genital. Not only uh, it can be very non-reduced during our process. Because we allow, we always work on smooth things, but the ideal we allow to replace it by all sorts of strange things, it will be very non-reduced. So no geometric intuition will work for Z from now on. Okay? Uh, good. Now, primary invariant uh, is order of IZ, which is just minimum D such that order less than D derivation of I is trivial. So how many derivations do you need to kill your idea? Okay, just uh, example, if I consider order at the origin of something like x6 uh, plus y square z cube comma z7, this will be pi. Okay, order pi. Okay, good. Uh, two. Uh, we always blow up uh, dv or iv with power t. Such that v is contained in the order equal d log of x. So we define maximal environment, the, the guy which we want to kill, yeah? We want to reduce it to one. And uh, in order to do it, uh, we will only struggle with the locals where the order is maximal. And uh, once we blow up such a thing, we are allowed, yeah? So uh, this is equivalent, actually, to the thing that I, Z, contains I, V to be T. So, after blowing up, the pullback of IZ can be the, it contains principal ideal pullback of IV to be, and I can divide by it. This is precisely what I described before. Okay? Good. Uh, and one, we want to do it until uh, order of IZ drops. Okay? So this is the operation, this is transformation of IZ. I want to improve the, uh, again, sort of very naive approach. Three, uh, take any coordinate T. Coordinate means that order of T is 1. Uh, or it defines uh, smooth uh, uh, hypersurface. Uh, this is uh, locally. This is possible only locally, but I don't care because, as I explained, all my work is actually locally. Uh, any coordinate t inside d minus first derivation. I know that if I take d derivation, I get to unit. So if I take d minus 1, I get to element of order 1. Take any. This is the most contrivial uh, stage for proving of independence of anything. This is the only stage where I really make a choice. And uh, in the algorithm, I have to prove it. Uh, uh, ah, this is not... The, uh, why, why the center should be smooth? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, the point is as follows. I want to consider 
Uh, I want to walk inside smooth manifold. Okay, this is my. I don't know how to. You know. So I want. Uh, so uh, I embed something into smooth manifold. I want to keep smoothness when I proceed. The element manifold must stay smooth. I don't know any good formula uh, for modification of smooth manifold, uh, which produces something smooth except blowing up a smooth center. <coughs> okay. So just naturally, when you think you say my context, I want to to, to, to be in smooth manifolds. So this is my world. So only such thing, or just bookkeeping, just blow up is this power, but it's uh, the same order. Okay, all compositions of such things. I don't understand. How do you know that this uh, is it? Ah, I did. Not, I did. Not. Ah, I, I forgot. Forgot right. Okay. I just, just, just I said once, but it always will be smooth. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I just, 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 just only choose, choose smooth things inside this. Choose. You haven't, oh, I always choose. you haven't told us how to choose the. Uh, I, 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 I didn't. Okay. okay. So, so here the continuum is not, not uh, canonical. I, 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 I did not say how, how I choose it yet. I, I just I say that this is my limitation. Okay. This is just limitation. Now I'm, I'm going to. Okay. Uh, four. Uh, restrict. Uh, I to H smart. Okay, now what does it mean smart? Uh, I want not to lose too much information. So I define C of CI, the, which is coefficient ideal. I omit it the formal and restrict to H, which is coefficient ideal. Now, uh, the formula is as follows. I just take sum from I equals 0 to D minus 1 of derivation of the lesser equal I of I. So I average over all derivations. But I should remember that <coughs> zero derivation has other D. Uh, first derivation has other D minus 1, and so on. So I want to weight them accordingly. So I'll take here uh, D factorial over D minus 1 to weight them accordingly. And then restrict it. So okay. H is vanishing of T? Or? Yes. Okay. H is vanishing of T. I forgot to write this here. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this is smooth hypersurface. This is called maximal contact. This is called maximal contact. This is the thing which was discussed by Giroux, or at least formalized. We restrict it. Okay, good. So just to illustrate it by example what really this means. Uh, take I given by a single equation T to D plus A2 T D minus 2 plus A D. Okay? And in such case, CI. Uh, so I assume that my variables are t and t2, tn, and the coefficients depend only on the other variables, not on t. Then ci uh, restricted to h will be just the ideal generated by a2 d factorial over 2, a d d factorial over d. Okay? So this is an ideal on a d? Or on h, not on the global thing. On h. But uh, this formula makes sense in global right. also. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it makes sense, yeah, but uh, we use it only on H. Okay? Now, uh, uh, the meaning of this is very, very simple. But I restrict, uh, you know, I restrict all coefficients and not just, not just, uh, you know, not just this. Now, I claim, and it's an easy exercise, that the order of I at the point equals D, if and only if order of this guy equals D factor. I mean, order equals d if order of this is larger than 2, order of this larger than 3, order of this is larger than d. Okay? This is an indication of a claim which I now make. Uh, proof of a claim is a bit more complicated, but it at least sounds natural. The point is that uh, i comma d, my original problem for i with order d is equivalent to C of i restricted to H, comma D factor. If I have a sequence which principalizes this idea on H, I'll just push forward these blow ups on H and its transforms, and I'll get reduction of i. So at first stage, the invariant is the same. I just explained why, more or less. To prove that it persists, you should do some work. But it's not that complicated. So this is sort of a thing which enables induction on dimension. So once I have this, 
I can run induction and I will not say you how I choose V. I just say you would reduce by one dimension and then by another, by another. Each time you get T factorial in the exponent. It's very unfortunate if you want to realize it in a computer program, but in small dimensions it can. Okay, where you have to pay? Uh, it can happen, uh, obviously, from this example, for example, uh, that uh, can happen that C of i restricted to h is a further Larger, strictly larger than d factor. So I have problem which is equivalent for something if I only make transforms by d factorial, but the order here can be larger. In a sense, uh, uh, I reduce my problem to co-dimension one, but it remembers what are transforms in all life. It has some karma in your life. This karma makes it difficult to, to do good transforms of ideas. Now, what uh, is the solution uh, by Hirunak? Uh, so, uh, treat exception divisor E with care. So, in particular, E is always S and C. And this forces us to only blow up centers which are in good position with respect to accumulated boundary. We don't want to destroy it. So not only it should be smooth, so V has simple normal crosses with E. So this restricts our choice. And then uh, you sort of reduce to the same question with uh, maximal order. We iteratively, we first of all, we choose the maximal order and reduce it. We get accumulated extra boundary, but it can be, but it's uh, SNC, it's not that horrible. So our ideal gets larger. We are not able to keep with the for the D. It gets something of for the D times exceptional divisor, and then we get rid of exceptional divisor by combinatorial method. Okay? So this makes the algorithm more complicated, and uh, the final invariant of the algorithm looks as follows D1, which is order of I. And then S1, which is number of exceptional components at your point, or in the sense history. And then you have D2, which is the order of C of i into H. Then you have S2 again, complication, this combinatorial complication, how many exceptional components you have, and so on. And you, this is primary invariant, first of all you want to improve this. But inside this loop you want to improve this, and inside this loop you want this, and so on. So algorithmically, if you encode it in C, it's just a nested sequence of loops. Okay. Uh, so on one, uh, uh, into, into worse, this is the global structure of the algorithm. There are certain combinatorial complications I will not go to. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, I, a few times I tried to ask at lectures, if uh, Hironaka was the first guy who used simple normal crossing divisor, I don't know. I don't know about any work before him. So I, I am really curious if he invented simple normal crossing for his, <laughs> for his method. But definitely this method works. You, 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 you run uh, with these cycles, you run induction on multiplicity locus of, you have stratification by simple normal crossing, and you run uh, also induction on uh, just ad hoc. Okay, good. Uh, now maybe, uh, it's time to uh, to make a, a, a table. Uh, so uh, 
let's consider an equality of spaces and derivations, uh, regularity. parameters of local structure, centers, and the other. And in the classical algorithm, we more or less describe what the block is. One block with varieties of a K, or maybe uh, schemes, uh, some quasi schemes with enough derivations, because all our algorithm is based on derivations, you can see derivations both in definition of the order, in definition of maximum contact, in definition of coefficient ideal, so it's heavily based on derivations. Uh, uh, derivations will be derivations of uh, uh, k, derivations of uh, q in the absolute case. Even for variety, these are two bit different things, but uh, the algorithm nevertheless gets the same. It requires some argument. Uh, regularity is smooth, or regular. In logic category, it's natural to consider the reality with respect to all regular orbitals, not only smooth. Parameters, well, locally, our thing looks like KT TN. Centers are just uh, T1, TR, T1, D. Locally, you can always choose your parameters in such a way. And order is uh, just this D. Okay? And now, uh, what is done in logarithmic uh, situation? Uh, so, first of all, as I explained, in the beginning we switch to log varieties, or morphisms of log varieties. In this category, naturally, you consider, uh, so, uh, log smooth varieties, you can think about them as toroidal varieties, just variety with toroidal structure. So, actually, it's Ah, we, want, we would like to run principalization of ideals on toroidal varieties and not just on uh, smooth thing with SNC. Obviously, it's a generalization of smooth with SNC, but I will allow now you will immediately see the difference. So, first of all, derivation here will be a logarithmic one over k over q. For the reality, it will be log smooth or log regular. And local structure will be k of t1 up to tn and some monoid p, rhetoric monoid. Okay. Uh, centers will be of the form t1 tr to be d plus m, where m is monoid. Any monomial idea. Now, this is a new feature. Uh, it's known that if I take toroidal variety and blow up toroidal ideal, I still get toroidal variety. It's even log and telemorphism in uh, log category. So I have more centers which I can on the nose blow up without destroying my situation. So I have a chance for better algorithm because I have more centers. And uh, this is indeed what happens. The algorithm becomes better because I have... Uh, yeah. And uh, the order here is, uh, you can imagine, first of all, this D. But if there is no D, I'll write log order. What is uh, the log order if R equal? It's infinity. So there is a real uh, the real novelty is that we'll have here a case where uh, we have uh, uh, infinite order. Okay, but before going to uh, infinite order, let's think if I have to modify anything over there. And uh, the answer is no. You only put here logarithmic. Let's call now a X logarithmic with respect to that log structure. And you just literally repeat everything which is written here. Just uh, you define log order as the minimal amount of derivations, logarithmic derivations, which takes to get to a unit. And 
you repeat all this. But if you are given an uh, ideal, which is purely monomial, then you never get to union because any monomial is eigenvalue of logarithmic derivation. So logarithm is infinite, and you don't have maximal contact. You have to do something else. This is real novelty which happens. So but now we all also have infinite logarithm. Okay? But all the rest is just literally you just you write here log and, and that's it. Okay. Uh, and now uh, uh, what you uh, do in uh, uh, new case uh, if log order of i is infinite and in fact it's due to Collar it's, we, after we found it we found that it was known Collar asked the question if you are given toroidal uh, variety with ideal, how much you can improve it only by toroidal blows up. This is precisely the answer. That you can uh, make log order finite. If it was infinite, you can make it finite. That's all that you can reach. You do the following. You consider mi, uh, monomial hull of i, which is uh, ma uh, a minimal monomial ideal, which contains i. You blow up M of I You uh, divide by pullback of MI and you get your log order finite So something computed, completely stupid and, and obvious Why it works? Let's consider a case when, T, when I is given again by one element sum of MI TI In such a case, normal hull will be just generated by all normal coefficients. Once I blow up this ideal, after blowing up, uh, there is a single MI which divides all the rest. The ideal becomes stable. And my transform precisely divides by the generator. So I get one thing which becomes of finite order with respect to log derivations. Okay? So something very simple. Now, once again, <laughs> as a few times happened, again, there is a one place to wait. Uh, and um, originally we thought that it is completely uh, technical, uh, but uh, if uh, we want we walk is ID and log order is infinite, we want to blow up not MI but MI to the power of one over D. Because we want to, to remove this power of something. So algorithm, in fact, it does not know, it has no information if a monomial is a this power or not this power. Uh, because extracting this power is logarithmic cover. Algorithm is compatible with this method. And uh, it also consistent with the observation that the log order of monomials is infinite. It's the only way of order of log of invariant, which is invariant when you extract roots of an element. So, uh, the algorithm has no idea, it doesn't worry, it just says you must uh, use this. Now, how it, would, how it goes? Uh, the obstacle also sort of indicates what is the solution. It says that you should better, if, if anyway it's functorial, when it log it locally, yeah, not log, not the tie lock, log it locally, you can extract the roots. So consider this log it cover and blow up there. Okay, just walk not it uh, locally, walk log it And I'll give example how it works. So let's take y equal to spec of k of c and uh, v which is root of u this goes to x which is spec k of c and u okay, I take the same ideal here and here, what is I take here, g square u 
And here I take t squared, least squared. Okay? So principalization of this ideal is sort of obvious. I would like just to blow up t comma v squared. Yeah, so my center is uh, t v squared. This gives me y prime, and uh, which is, uh, uh, okay, blow up. Blow up of uh, t v. Okay, let's ignore this just for, to be faster. Okay, now this is mu2 x, so I would like here just to divide by mu2. Okay, in order to get here. Now the problem is that if I stupidly divide, I get something which is no good. Uh, just simple uh, computation shows. So the only way to do it smartly is to divide as a stack. So I get here something not before, but with mu2 stabilizer origin, and it is uh, log smooth and even smooth. Uh, and we, de we denote this as blow up, or Kummer blow up, uh, along uh, t and u1 of x. Okay? Its coarse model space is just y model mu2, which is just usual blow up of t square u, which is Singular. Okay. So, uh, and uh, yeah, a nice exercise to check that this is a really Cartesian square in saturated, in saturated category. So it's indeed in the category of saturated log schemes. Uh, uh, indeed, we have compatible uh, principalization of this thing and this thing. Despite the fact that here we produce stack and here we go to the so are you saying if you, if you want like a fully functorial algorithm that's compatible with log and yeah. you're forced to take stack? Yeah, I, I'm just forced. Okay. Yeah, just I have no, I have no, no, no other, so, so this is precisely, okay? And uh, well, uh, so just uh, in, in two words, this is what happens here. Once you really formalize uh, blow ups of uh, centers, uh, like I wrote there, T1, Tr, U to one over D, U1, U S one over D, U over D, without power D again, it's not important. Once you formalize such blobs, everything runs without trouble. So re re real headache was to, no, to, to discover that there is stack theoretic enhancement of non smooth state, which makes your. Now, once we discover this, you immediately find that actually there is a way to blow up. Anything like T1 to D1, TN to DN, and get something smooth. And get a smooth step. Now, I'm out of time, so I'll just say by force what uh, really you, you get. Uh, ah, no, maybe I, maybe I have time to, uh, to really write. But, uh, okay, so I'll denote this, let's call this thing I. I denote it blow up of I. X again, sort of stacking blow. Uh, it's operation which uh, takes uh, such an ideal and produces a non-representable modification whose coarse modular space is usual blow up, just like what we have here. Brian, nice formulas how to do it and so on. Again, I'm just out of time to write out details, uh, but. Um, Right here, so here we still work with varieties of schemes. Again, we just use usual derivations of Q. We use usual smoothness of regularity. It's still K of T1, Tn. We just don't need divisors at all in this method. And our centers will be T1 to D1, Tr to Dr. And the weighted order is D1 up to Dr. Such a thing. Uh, with d1 less or equal to d2 less or equal to d1. Okay. Now the main result uh, in this uh, uh, situation
theorem, uh, which was independently proved by McKellen. Uh, for any i on a smooth variety, there exists unique j containing i. Uh, again, there exists block. Uh, such that j is of the form t1 d1 tr dr. The sequence d1 dr is maximal in less order. So there is a unique guy which has maximal things. Uh, and once you blow up, once you blow up this thing, and you define transform of your ideal just by pulling back and dividing by pullback of this, the log uh, weighted order of I prime is strictly smaller than the weighted order of I, which is just you have an algorithm which improves everything in one blow up without any memory, without exception divisor, just sort of dream algorithm which was believed not to exist. It exists just because you extended your category smart enough. Okay? So, just last word, I apologize for two minutes, uh, I've been late. Uh, you can ask what are these guys which are up here. So, T1 is the first maximal contact, and T1 is the first order. And T2 is the second maximum order, and so on. So we, everything was known, just people didn't know what to do with it. What they could do only to blow up T1 to D1, T2 to D1, and so on. And because of this, you get, get much more complicated numbers. If you have good blow up, you immediately. And I hope that these tools should be also useful in other areas of operational geometry, not only. Okay, thank you for your attention.